Good morning, America. Today is March the 24th. It is a Friday, and it is 11, 22, or 23. I just looked behind me, and it was 22. Okay, we're trying to finish up Section A of um, The Anger of God. And we're on um, two words, consuming and powerful his wrath is consuming and it is powerful it is evidenced by what you see when he walks through his land if he is happy he will leave nothing but sunshine behind him if he is unhappy he will leave sheer destruction behind him and he has uh, he walks through his land continuously backwards and forwards. And when he has walked through your city or your town and has left disaster behind him, you ought to be looking up and seeing what it is that the Lord is displeased with. But we don't think like that anymore. We're too busy depending on the politicians to meet all our needs when it is God who initially meets all of our needs. But until we get that here in our head, we're going to continue to experience all the terror and all the destruction and the foul weather that we have been receiving. It will just continue. Did you hear me? It will continue and it will get worse. All right. You pass the my babble to you and give you a few of the words of God. But here at Spiritual Water, we don't babble. We read the gospel of the word of God to you verbatim, verse by verse by verse, and we explain it to you. Okay, so if you're not hearing it in your home church, you can definitely tune on to YouTube at Spiritual Water and hear the true word of God. Now we're talking about his power, it can be, we described it as sometimes delay, slow, brief, restrained, fear, fearsomeness, consuming and powerful is the way we would describe it today. And we're going to be reading from Psalms 90. It is a short psalm. It only has 17 verses in it. But the colors we have here are purple for the Trinity, the first four verses. Then we have pink for witnessing. We do have a few verses of black for sin, and we go back to pink for witnessing. We do have two verses of green for love, verse 14 and 15. Um, and we have three verses of, of uh, orange for your faith. Uh, and uh, we will be reading it both from the King James Bible, as well as from the New International Bible, just to be sure that the people of God are understanding that which is being read unto them. Let's begin. Uh, Psalms 90 talks about God's days are eternal. Yes, they are eternal. He was here before the first uh, plant or animal or anything was formed before the skies, the filaments, before all that was formed, God existed. Um, he will be around forever. Unlike us mortals, we will not be occupying his space, his earth forever. Okay, our time is limited here, and he is the only one that knows exactly how long you will remain on his earth. Okay, so God's days are eternal, but man's days are what? Numbered. And only he knows that number, that magic number, I call it. Okay, so let's begin with the first verse. I will read all of the purple together, and then I will transfer, go into the New International Version, just to be sure that you understand what is being read to you. Verse 1 says, Lord, and this is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Okay, so he is the one who wrote this particular psalm. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. That means this generation included. Because it says in all generation. In his generation when he was writing this and in our generation. And those that come after us is included in that all generation. 
Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, too, still purple. Before the mountains were formed, were brought forth, or even thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That means he, he was in existence before anything was formed. Three, thou turnest man to destruction and saith, Return ye children of men. Of course, you turn that God can turn our world into destruction in, uh, in, in an effort to get man to turn back unto him. Okay? He, he finds ways to get our attention. But when you're working with a stiff-necked individual who play games with God, we don't perceive it as, as, as we should. Not like the biblical people who looked upon everything as a blessing or a curse. And that's the way we should look upon things, as a blessing or a curse. Okay? So, uh, thou turnest man to destruction and saith, Return ye children of men. And return ye children of men is written in uppercase lettering in that verse. Alright? 4 says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So, one day to God is a thousand years. We don't even get to live to be 900 anymore. Okay? Uh, so, let's go here and read it from verse 1 to verse 4. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Verse 2. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Three, you turn man back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O son of man. Um, it says here, Thou turnest man to destruction. You see how it changes. Whenever I have a problem with a verse, I always point that out to you. All right. It says, Return. Thou turnest man to destruction and saith, Return, ye children of men. Okay, it didn't say he returned it to dust. Destruction, that means man needs to be still alive to see that destruction. Dust means they're dead. Okay? Uh, four. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Okay, five. We're going to read it from here because it's pink for witnessing. So it's six. Thou carries them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep, and in the morning they are like grass which groweth up. Six. Uh, in the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. Let's take it from here. Five. You sweep man away in the sleep of death. Uh, they are like the new grass of the morning. Six. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and widow. Seven. It's that one black, uh, two black verses we have. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Of course we're troubled. Of course we're troubled. We're always troubled. Always. But we never look up to see why the trouble has come down. We never bend our knees to ask the Lord why he has troubled us. Instead, we look at the politicians and man itself for relief. What a sinful generation. For we are consumed by thy anger. And by thy wrath are we troubled. Eight still black. Thou hast set our inequities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. There is nothing. No way you can hide. That God does not see what you're doing. There is nowhere you can hide and God does not see what you are saying or doing. He can see what you're doing. He can hear what you're saying before it even comes out of your mouth. Seven and eight from here. It says, 
We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can nobody terrify you like the God of Israel? Nobody. All right. Eight. You have set our inequities before you. Our secret sins in the light of your presence. Okay. Nine. Ten and eleven and twelve. It's pit back to pink for witnessing. Excuse me. Back to pink for witnessing. And it says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Ten. The days of our years are... Three score years and ten, that's seventy years. And if by reason of strength thy be four score years, that's eighty. Yet is our strength labored and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. That means we pass away. Eleven, who knoweth the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Twelve, so teach us to number our days, and that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number these days and apply our hearts unto wisdom, not foolishness. Okay, so let's take it from 9 to 12. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. 10. The length of our days is 70 years or 80. If we have strength, yet their span is about Trouble and sorrow, for they are quickly passed and we fly away. <laughs> Let me read 10 from here. The days of our years are three scores, years, and ten. That's 70. And by reason of strength, they may be four score years. That's 80. That's not the way it says it here. The length of our days is 70 years. It doesn't say or 80. If we have strength, yet... Their pain is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Here it says, the days of our years are three scores and ten, which is seventy. And if by reason of strength they be four score, yet is their strength labored. Labor is not even in here. And sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. For they quickly pass and we fly away. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's an iffy verse. The way they translated it. Okay. So I want you to hear it from this verse because that's the true one. It says, the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four scores, yet is their strength labored in sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and they fly away. 11. Who knoweth the power of thy anger, even according to the fear? So is thy wrath. Okay, let's see what 11. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Okay, so that's been changed a little too. Because it says, who knows the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear? So is thy wrath. Okay. Uh, it says, who knows the power of thy anger, which is correct. For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. It's been changed. All right. Twelve. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Very good. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That's very good. Uh, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Thirteen is orange for your faith. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servant. Thirteen says, repent, O Lord, exclamation mark, isn't it? Or exclamation mark in the original. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. It says, return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thy concerning thy servant. It doesn't say that. You see why I sometimes don't like to use this new international version. Okay, 14 and 15 is green for love. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad 
all our days. 15. Make us glad according to the days therein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let's read 14 and 15 from here. Sanctify us early in the morning with your unfailing love. Okay. That we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Okay, that sounds pretty much the same. 15, let's see what that says. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Okay. And the years wherein we have seen evil. That's very correct. Make us glad according to the day wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Perfect. Make us glad according to the day wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Perfect. Um, 16 and 17 is orange for your faith. Let thy work appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto their children. And 17, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Let's read it from here. Let thy work appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto their children. Exactly. Let thy work appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto thy children. Very good. 17 says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Excellent. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Okay, let's see. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Very good. Yea, the work of our hands establish it. Yea, the work of our hands establish it. If you say it the exact same way, it's perfect. You have not altered anything. Now, when it's written like that, it's easy. It's easier. Wait a minute. Let me read it from here. I'm sorry. 15. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. Okay. 16. May your deeds be shown to your servant, and your splendor to their children. 17. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the works of our hands for us. Yes, establish the works of our hands. Okay, that's correct. And when it's correct, no problems here. <laughs> when it's incorrect, major problems with Senor de Guerrero. <laughs> okay, so that is uh, all of Psalms uh, 90. And I just need to read 7 again to you. And which one was it, Father? 11. 7 says... For we have we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled, and we certainly are. And eleven says, Who knoweth the power of thy anger, uh, even according to thy fear, so is thy work wrath. So we're gonna repeat it here from seven. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. Eleven, who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due unto you. Yes, and it is great as the fear that is due unto our Father. If we really feared our Father, there will be so many actions and deeds we would not perform for the fear of God. If you truly have fear of God, you will not do certain evil things. It is just a fact, the matter, and the same fact that one and one equals two. It's a fact. One and one equals two. So if you have fear for God, you're going to be able to obtain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because the prerequisites for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is fear of the Lord. Okay? And what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowledge in that which is spiritual, which is what wisdom is. Knowledge and understanding in that which is spiritual. Or knowledge guided by understanding. Understanding is that which is spiritual. Okay, that's what wisdom is. Knowledge guided by understanding. So let you obtain some knowledge. Let you be guided by understanding. And then, and only then, will you be walking on the right road, which is often the narrow road. 
Okay, the big wide road is where all kinds of stuff is happening. Las Vegas is that big wide lit road where all kinds of monstrosity is happening there. That is what the people like. They don't like that little narrow road where there's nothing there but ground and grass and some sceneries here and there. But that is the proper road to walk on. Okay? So watch the road you walk on. Don't get on Deceptive Avenue. Don't get off Mischief. Don't get on Mischief Boulevard. Stay off those roads. Get on Blessed Parkway. Huh? Get on Blessed Parkway. Get on uh, Anointed Avenue. Stay off Mischief Road. And you may live longer. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. It's been a pleasure to spread the word of God with thee. And I hope above all things that you obtain wisdom and knowledge and understanding by hearing the word of God being read unto thee. May the peace of God be upon thee. May the protection of God surround thee. And may the will of God for your life come from thee. Until the next time, enjoy the rest of your day.